In this video, we are going off-road in the brand new Chevy Tahoe, but not just any Tahoe. The Z71 Tahoe with the big old 6.2 liter V8. We're gonna find out, is this the best three-row off-road SUV? So you've got a family, you've got a boat you wanna haul, but you also wanna tackle the off-road adventures while a Wrangler or Bronco are often gonna to be too small. This Tahoe is an interesting proposition because you can bring everything and everyone along, but does that compromise off-road capability? This is the Z71 with the off-road performance package. Let's see what that gives you. Goodyear Wrangler Trail Runner AT tire wrapped around a 20 inch wheel, a little big for off-roading in my opinion. However, the tire is fairly aggressive and behind the tire, you'll find four corner air suspension. All right, let's do the rock test. All right, that made a nice little clang. So we've got underbody protection on the Z71. We also have tow hooks painted red, which means they're functional. But beyond that, they actually redesigned the front end here with a different front bumper, which gives you a little bit more clearance for approach angle on the front tires. Pretty clever stuff. Now, most Tahoes I've driven recently have the retractable running boards, which suck for off-roading. And luckily, this one doesn't. Although, no real rocker protection if I own this vehicle and wanted to take it off-road. Something I would add. And in the back, we have a limited slip rear differential. So, we'll give that a test, see how that works on some off-camber terrain. The engine in this Tahoe is the Monster 6.2 liter V8. 420 horsepower, but this thing is a torque machine. 460 pound-feet of torque, 10-speed automatic transmission, of course, four-wheel drive. Now the downside of this combo, 16 MPG combined, 14 city and 19 highway. The upside though, it's got four exhaust tips and kind of unusual for the latest GMs I've driven, it sounds pretty good. off-road traction, we are going to air down these good gear tires. Quite a long time ago, I drove the all-new Tahoe Z71 off-road in the dry up a mountain, and it performed quite well, but I wasn't all that impressed with its overall dynamics off-road. But I think, and this is where I was wrong, it was coming from a standpoint of small, lightweight, nimble off-roaders. Since then, I've driven this vehicle's competitive set vehicles like the Toyota Sequoia, right? The TRD model. Um, even vehicles like the Land Rover Defender, to some extent, three row, kind of compete with this vehicle. Um, and I, I've, I've approached this car now with a new, a new mindset, and I have to say, I'm much more impressed with it because what I didn't realize at first is that, you know, the reason it's so big and heavy is so that you can haul a ton and you can carry your family and all their stuff to the lake and yet come out here and do this kind of thing. And this model has the 6.2 liter V8 versus the last one I drove which had the 5.3 and this is an absolute game changer. What a phenomenal engine. Now I'm going to approach this really snowy snowbank. I'm going to take it at granny speed and see how the traction is with the dirt tracks. See if we can get up here. Wow. Very impressive. Okay, that was granny speed. Now let's try it with Nathan speed. Let's see how this V8 sounds. This is what I'm really excited about. First gear, selectable would be a buttons and come on, come on V8, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 4,000 RPM. Listen to it sing. That is phenomenal. That is an absolute game changer for the Tahoe. Another 5.3 fine small block v8 but this 6.2 this is an absolute blast i just i love this engine i'm a huge fan of electrification i'm even a big fan of turbocharging and smaller displacements but something about an american small block v8 revving out to four five thousand rpm that just is and it's got a lot of um, 420 horsepower i mean that is nothing to shake a stick at even though granted we are at 8,000 feet above sea level right now, 9,000 feet above sea level, it maybe doesn't have the outright torque of an EcoBoost or the outright torque of like the new Sequoia with the twin turbos. Um, at this kind of elevation, it still is an absolute ride to drive. Come on, that was pretty good. Nice work, Tahoe. So you can get it a little bit sideways if you want. The steering ratio is a little bit slow for correction, but uh, especially in low range, it allows you a lot of freedom of engine control as well as uh, traction management. So that was, that was a fun little, uh, little experiment. I 
want to see how the air suspension in the Tahoe works and its effect on ground clearance and approach angle. So what we're going to do is we've come up to this really kind of gnarly rock section. I'm going to slowly approach and I'm in the low setting and I think you'll find that we're actually going to run out of ground clearance if I were to keep going um, and actually bury that nose into the rock. So what I'm going to do here is adjust the air suspension upward. So we're going into normal and then increase ground clearance. And if I put the vehicle into low range, there's actually one more mode above that, which I think is pretty cool. So there's a maximum ground clearance mode. Now the, the vehicle's going to lift all by itself. But there we go, we're in the high setting, and now we can approach the rocky obstacle. And you'll see we have plenty of ground clearance to clear it and we can climb on up. See if we have the departure angle. Yep, pretty cool, look at that. So that's all thanks to the air suspension. It's a really great system. I like being able to control it, having an access height and then a low setting on the road, and then jacking it up into the high setting for the off-road uh, terrain that you might be driving on. The steering wheel in the Tahoe Z71 feels straight out of the Silverado pickup, and that is a great thing. Leather wrapped, very high quality, control throughout. Some of my favorite, the heated steering wheel function and buttons in the back. I love where they put the audio control buttons on the right spoke back here. Really good steering wheel. A lot going on with the gauge cluster are fully digital over 12 inches large looks fantastic very high resolution we've got speed we've got our tachometer and then the middle section is completely configurable which I think is absolutely fantastic but nice and high quality and relatively easy to use drive selection on the Tahoe is via these buttons push in for park pull for reverse push for neutral Pull for driving down here we have selectable gear ranges so you push in on low and then you can limit the gear range to one two all the way up through 10th gear the latest and greatest in chevrolet infotainment system and it's much better than previous generations super easy to use with shortcuts along the left side of the screen so for example like the home shortcut we can access everything from android auto to apple carplay and even our 360 degree camera suite which is some of the best in the industry i love for example this camera of the front wheel position you can see exactly where you're going when you're traversing over rocks we also have hitch modes um, and then general 360 degree uh, modes which allow you to see everything around the vehicle now this big SUV does a great job of managing digital and hard controls for example I love the inclusion of both volume and tune knobs along with climate controls which are all tactile functions they feel great now we do have heated seats we can heat the back and the butt or just the back if you want and then rear climate shortcut as well and then down here is a wireless charger which is large and in charge I love that feature on this Tahoe now there is a secret cubby on the dashboard of the Tahoe it looks small but it's actually insanely deep I can fit most of my hand in there now the dash material feels quite nice and we do have this wood trim up top here quite modern and overall good to use now stepping into the second row you really see why people love their Tahoes. There is so much room back here. My driving position at six feet tall and <laughs> check this out. It's like being in business class on an airplane. Lots of space. It has the captain's chairs as well. So it's two seats in the front, two seats in the middle, three in the back for a total of seven. Now we also have the rear seat entertainment package back here with these large and in charge screens and HDMI ports below here too, along with USB-C, heated rear seats, separate climate control. And then down here, we also have a three prong 110 volt power outlet. So in theory, you could run a pretty cool little gaming convention with the backseat of the Tahoe. Now no sunroof in this model worth noting, although we do have air controls for your face and lots and lots of headroom. Also cool, seat slides forward and backward, so very configurable. The seats in the Tahoe do fold and tumble, so I can pull down on this lever and it folds down and it really does fold down. It actually lowers itself to the floor a little bit and then I can pull a strap back here and the whole thing will tumble forward allowing me access to the third row and let's see how spacious it is spacious it is back here so it's going to click down into place lift it up and of course it slides forward and backward for more or less third row space but yeah this is a great third row one of the best in the industry it doesn't have a sloping roof line so i still have tons of headroom it's even a little bit scalloped back here uh, cup holders usb-c ports for third row passengers this would be a great place even for a three four five hour long road trip for full-sized adults there's also a little button over here on the c pillar and that will power fold it for easy access to the rear seat 
Couple of ways to get into the trunk of the Tahoe. My favorite is the glass pop. Super handy, doesn't take up much room. Now, one thing that is very important to realize, I am, like I keep saying, six feet tall, and I keep saying it because it's very important with the Tahoe. I can't even touch the floor of the trunk. I mean, it's just such a high lift over height. So this is great for like dropping off your groceries, but there's a good chance that all your eggs will be broken by the, by the time they reach the trunk floor. Now it's very important on these vehicles if you're shorter to, uh, you know, select that little button that lowers it down when you get out of the vehicle. Uh, that would make access to the trunk a little bit easier. And then of course, power operated lift gate and <laughs> The whole thing opens up and then you have access to the area behind the third row. Now it isn't quite as cavernous as like the um, Suburban. Still pretty decent room, but if you want the ultimate in seven seater hauling capability, consider that model. Um, however, let's see what's underneath the floor. A tiny amount of additional storage. And then we also have the power folding third row. So I can push a couple buttons down here. And those will fold down automatically and then you know, seat up, seat down for the second row, huge amounts of space. I want to see how that rear limited slip differential works. So the left side is stuck in the snow on this really slippery compact ice. And then the right side of the Tahoe is planted in this grippy gravelly rock. So in an open diff, that wheel in the snow is just going to spin and spin and spin. But in theory, this LSD is going to be smart enough to send power to this wheel so we can get unstuck. To make this test as hard as possible and to isolate just the rear wheels, I've gone ahead and put the Tahoe into two wheel drive. I'm going to leave traction control on on this first round and we're going to see what happens. So in drive up this fairly steep hill, I'm going to apply some power. That wheel is going to start to spin, which it is. Traction control is working hard. We're kicked sideways, but we did make it up. So that was a combination of the traction control and the LSD working together to get me up the hill. So what was going on is like traction control breaks the spinning wheel to try to send torque to the wheel with traction. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable traction control and we shall try it again. So now traction control is disabled, still in two wheel drive. And here we go. Okay, that's good. So that time, it felt like I was able to get maximum slippage of both rear wheels and we were able to crawl our way up the hill even in two wheel drive. So the first time definitely felt traction control cutting power, trying to let the computers figure it out. The second time um, it was traction control off and that was down to the ELSD to figure out what to do. Taking a look at the Monroney on the 6.2 equipped Z71, we see quite a number of options ranging from the luxury package to the off-road performance package, the rear seat media system, that is a big option. All in all, $72,710. So this is a pricey rig, but if you want to tow your boat and you also want to do some exploring, a lot of these full-size three-row SUVs are, you know, well upwards of 60, 70, even $80,000 in some cases. Now from a drivability standpoint, one thing I have noticed, which is very apparent on the Tahoe, it's also very apparent on a lot of air suspension vehicles, the down travel, especially in the off-road height. So it really becomes very firm. Now normal height, this thing's got a great ride. It's nice and supple. The increased height, kind of the off-road height one, firms up a little bit, but still pretty bearable. Now the top height, the maximum height, that I would strongly recommend you use only in like the situations where you are the most stuck, help you get unstuck, but it's not something you really want to drive around in off-road because it does become very, very firm. Now Land Rover, I think does the best job of minimizing this effect with the new Defender. Um, and I think GM could improve that system a little bit with the Tahoe Z71. A couple other things I've noticed, this does have a very tall hood. So sight lines out of the front are compromised. That's really when you want to use those off-road cameras. You can engage them on the screen and then it does help see what's directly in front of the hood because this is a tall beast it really is very tall and then the last thing I'm not a huge fan of the brake pedal feel is very mushy I I'm not getting a lot of feedback and it doesn't inspire me with a lot of confidence I think that that could be improved a little bit too I'm gonna slam on the brakes now alrighty BS kicked in but we were able to glide to a stop interesting in low range it still allows you ABS control. But beyond that, this is a very potent vehicle and um, especially if you do want 
an overlander for a trip of a week, two weeks, three weeks, this could be a great option because it does have so much space to carry all of your stuff. And I am very impressed with the four-wheel drive system. So we have four modes, obviously two-wheel drive, um, four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive high, and then a four-wheel drive auto. And the auto has kind of blown me away for the most part. Now, uh, you don't get that crabbing in auto, right, when you're making sharp turns, but unlike the early auto systems, which were pretty feeble, they took a long time to figure out what to do and to engage the new system, very quick to respond. And it really isn't all that dissimilar from four-wheel drive high, in my experience, when it comes to the off-road snow performance. Now, should you get the, uh, the 6.2 liter V8? Yes. <laughs> I shrugged because do you need it? Absolutely not. The, the standard 5.3 has more than enough power, especially for four-wheel drive terrain, but the 6.2 is the engine you want. Now it does sound very cool. It still is a little bit too muffled. It's better than some other GMs I've heard in the past, but um, I would uncork it a little bit if it were my rig and really let that small block Chevy sink. Well, that was actually a ton of fun out here in the snow and the ice. Now, any further up and it just turns into I mean, pure ice, so I think this is as high as we're gonna go. But the Tahoe performed really well. I think in the world of full-size off-road SUVs, this is one of the peaks. Now, I do wish it had like a proper rear locking diff, but we did prove that the LSD does a good job of sending power left and right. Skid plate group was good. A set of rock rails and perhaps a slightly more aggressive set of tires, and this could be a lot of fun out on the trail beyond just your typical recreational dirt roads out to the trailheads. Now let me know what you think in the comment section below, and as always, if you want to see all our content in one spot, head over to tfl-studios.com for the latest and greatest in new SUV and pickup truck reviews.